All right, so today we are going to be talking about, well, not functions. I completely lied in the last video. I said we were gonna do functions this video, but not gonna happen yet. We're about two videos off from that. The reason why is because, well, I feel like these videos are huge right now. They're adding too many tools at a time. So I wanna just add smaller tools that you guys can learn faster and let you reiterate our script at a faster rate. So let's go ahead and double click on first script. Now it's probably gonna do that bug where we don't load up mono behavior you can tell because mono behavior doesn't change color, right? The way I've been fixing this bug, and I think I've said this in a previous video, is I literally just create an extra space, I save, and then I exit out of Visual Studio. When I do that, you'll see this pops up, right? It says asset database dot refresh, and that seems to fix the bug. And then I simply double click the script again, open it back up, and then everything changes color, and I can go ahead and erase all the extra spaces and save it again. A little annoying, but not too bad, right? So anyways, let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna talk about today, and that is constructors. So you see right here, where we have to actually set up the new enemy HP and everything, that that sucks. We have to go through here, we make a new battle alert as the enemy, and then we wait until the start function to actually do anything with that enemy. We don't get to change him from the normal stats that we have right here until we get to this point. So there's an easy way to fix that. You simply come down here and you can start making constructors. We make a public battler. You put in the parentheses and then you create these uh, open brackets like we normally do. So there are three different variables here that we use inside this class. Now we can use any number of these, one, two, three, zero of them even, inside of these parentheses and we can name them whatever we want. So if we go int and we can say n max HP and then we say int n HP and then we go int n attack right and that'll give us access to new integers inside of here right and then we can simply go over here and we can say max HP is equivalent to n max HP now we could have named this whatever we want the important part is that we actually fed in these integers in here and then we can make our variable equivalent to what that is. That's really hard to understand until you see it happen. It's okay to be lost at this point. In a little bit, it'll become clear. HP is gonna be equivalent to N HP, and then attack is gonna be equivalent to N attack. Now, again, it's okay to be in the fog right now. You're gonna, it's gonna make more sense here in a moment. Now, the problem here is both of these things go red, right? Because before what was happening, was that Mr. Translator was actually doing a job for us. He was just make believing that there was a constructor and he was just allowing for to create a constructor that makes it so these variables just stay the same. Now we don't have a constructor that exists because we made one ourselves. We've been using a constructor this entire time. So now it's time to figure out what a constructor is. All right, guys, so what I'm about to do here, do not copy it. It's uh, I'm going to go back to where you guys are inside the code, but so just watch this because I want to explain what a constructor is. You see, when you're making an instance of a class, when you're making an instance, you we first create the variable that's going to hold it. So on the left side is equal sign. We can actually end this at that point. That's how we create the variable. So we've talked about that before. Now, when we make this equal sign, we have to fill in that box. We have to fill in that variable with an instance of that class, an instance of that object. Instead of having the blueprint, we create an actual assembly of it. So in order to create a new one, we simply use the keyword new. And then we use the word battler. And then this uses a constructor. This new word says construct me a new battler. Construct me something off of this blueprint battler. And so a constructor is the particular blueprint that we want to use. And in this case, we only have one constructor right now, so it's not too confusing for it. And we'll talk about multiple constructors here in a moment. And we just simply have to fill in that constructor. So we can say 250, 250, and 25, for instance. So in other words, all a constructor is, is the process of building an instance. It's the blueprint for building a particular instance. It's the application of a blueprint to build an instance, I guess you can say. What a constructor does is it allows for you to actually give variables into a class, and then the constructor will actually use those variables that you feed into it, these three right here, and it'll do whatever you want it to do within these curly braces right here. So these curly brackets will actually do whatever is inside of here, and you can do whatever you want with this. You can do max HP plus, Five. You know, you can do whatever you want in here. You don't have to do it exactly like I did it in here. The point is that you can 
do whatever you want in here and you can feed in variables in here. So whoever's using this constructor will be able to feed in information to the class that you made making it so you don't have to just do this stuff inside of the start function anymore. So we wanted a max HP of 25 and then we wanted his HP to be set to his max HP, right? So it's pretty simple. If you go over to battler, you see we feed into max HP, the HP, and then we feed into an attack, right? So let's go 25, 25, and then we'll just do an attack of five. But what about a situation where we want the battler to just keep their information the same, where we want them to keep the variables the same? Well, in that case, we can simply create another constructor like so. And you can make any combination of a number of variables as long as it doesn't exactly match this one. So if we make another one that feeds in three ints, we'll see that it creates a problem because we have the exact same number of variables in the exact same order as up there. They have to not match in some way. If I take away one of these integers really quick, then I save, you'll see that the red squiggly lines go away because they don't match anymore. The system has to have a way to differentiate the different constructors, right? Mr. Translator won't know which one to pick if they're exactly the same. Let's have one where we don't use any variables over here and let's have it so it matches up the, the values that we have up there. So go ahead and see if you can figure out how to set the max HP to HP and the attack to exactly what we have up here right now. Go ahead and do that as a challenge. Okay, so all a constructor does is it takes in information when you're building a new instance of the class. So we're building the instance of the class up here. So when you do that, it takes in information, then does something with that information. It sets the variables to certain values, whatever you want to do in these curly braces. So in our case right now, we want it to max match up to the stats up there. So we can have something like this equals 100. And then if you really think about it, we no longer need to initialize these variables at that case. We can just simply go like this and leave the variables blank because when we construct it, it'll actually set up the values for us. And then right there, as you can see, it set up the values for us right there. And then over here, it sets the values to something completely different. And so no matter what we do, we always have the values being set. And that's kind of the point of a constructor. It makes it so that you don't need to do this anymore inside of your start function. Because if you really think about it, we did it up here where we did the 25, 25, and 5. So everything should still work the same inside of Unity. Boom, the, the attack goes off and the enemy is still killed. Everything works the same. We built it. All we did is we made it so that now we can construct the enemy like this, right? Which is pretty cool. The only thing that you're supposed to learn out of this is the new way that we construct things, these constructors. It has to be public because it has to be available outside of this uh, brackets. Battler is literally the same name as the class itself. So when you when they're making a new battler, they go down to the constructor. This is using the constructor right here. It's saying new says use a constructor to build me an instance of this class, right? And so it goes down and it looks through the different constructors that we made. And all you have to do to make a constructor is be within the class, say the class's name, public battler, and then have parentheses and then brackets. That's it. So if you have this much information, you have a constructor created. It's giving us the red squiggly lines right now because it's exactly the same as this one right here. So it won't give us the red squiggly lines underneath this anymore because this is now a constructor. It doesn't even have to have any information inside of it or anything. And that's it. That's all a constructor is. That's how it works. There is one other interesting facet that you can do for a constructor, and that's you can make it so you can have stats already set up for things. So if we wanted to have the stats that we're using down here be the normal ones that we can use for things, we can actually do this and set them equivalent. And then we can go ahead and destroy that new constructor that we created. And now check this out. Both of these work, right? And what it does is it goes through this constructor and it automatically picks 100 if we don't put anything in there. And then it automatically picks another 100 and another 25. Now you can actually uh, set up the stats in that order too. Like say for instance, I want to change my first stat to 200. I wanted to have 200 max HP. Well now 200 max HP will be set, but the other two will be set to 125. The normal HP will be 100. So we'll only have 100 out of the health and we'll still have the 25 attack. And I can use as much of that as I want. Like say for instance, I still want my HP to be set up to my max HP, but I want the 25 attack. Well then it goes 200 max HP, 200. So the order matters in this case. And when you set up things this way, the order matters. Because if 
So you want the thing to be last to be the thing that you don't normally want to change, right? And I think that you kind of get the point at this point. That's pretty much all there is to constructors, all you really need to know. So like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know if you're liking this series, if you like these videos, if you want me to go more in depth, if you want me to go less in depth. There, I, I thrive off feedback, guys. Otherwise, have the best day. I'm so thankful that you spent this time with me. Uh, oh, and Patreon is in the description down below if you would like to support the channel further. Other than that, have a great day, guys. I'll see you guys inside the next video.